It's a drive that can bring out the best in people. Even though I've been down in racing, it's just I got to keep moving forward and keep pushing. Right now, we're celebrating the competitive side of the Inland North Best. It's the adrenaline. I like the adrenaline of it a lot. I just love hitting people. I mean, no, no, inside, inside. From the racetrack to the stage, oh, the kitchen. Uh, it's, uh, it's definitely nice to have recognition that you're doing something right. And whatever this is, let's celebrate the people who are working hard to make it to the top. Once you get there, the work's already been done. And so I just try to leave it all on the stage. Thank you for joining us for this Inland North Best Special. I'm Channing Curtis. And I'm Tim Pham. Over the next half hour, we're highlighting some of the competitors and competitions that make the Inland Northwest such a great place to live. So we're starting with something extraordinary. Gabe Tesh is a local teen who has overcome some of life's toughest challenges. I sat down with Gabe, who is now on the road to becoming a Formula One driver. When I put on my gear and stuff and I get in the go-kart, Everything from the outside world kind of goes away, so it's kind of my happy place. Gabe Tesh began his dream of being a race car driver when he was 13 years old. Which sounds young, except for the fact that most drivers start when they're six or seven. My first race ever, I got dead last. Like, I was so slow. Second race, I crashed. And then after that, I won six races in a row. Just seeing him on the track and knowing where we were versus where he is now, I mean, you just, we just thank God every time we see him get in the car or, or you know finish a race it's like wow he's he's out there living his dream you know it was touch and go for a while touch and go because when gabe was 11 he was diagnosed with cancer the tumor was found in my brain um and so they had to do the surgery they took the tumor out and they had to find out if it was cancerous so they sent it to the tumor board and at first they came back to us saying it wasn't cancerous and we we're like okay phew and so we thought we were done. And then they looked at it again and they're like, oh wait, it is cancerous. I did 48 um, days of radiation and then 48 weeks of chemo to um, get rid of all the cancer cells and everything. I was always just locked up in the hospital or here at home. And so I felt like I was really missing out on my childhood. I saw my friends all doing normal things and going to school and I couldn't go to school. So I missed two years of school. I missed two years of hanging out with my friends because I was, I was just in and out of the hospital. And then chemo was probably the toughest part because it would just make me so sick and so weak. And I'd just be puking all day and all night and just feeling super weak and in pain. And there's just nights where I couldn't sleep because I was up all night, just feeling just terrible. He leaned on his family for support, but especially on his mom. A couple months before I was diagnosed, my mom actually just finished cancer. When we first found out he was going to have to do chemo treatments and stuff, we were talking to him and Sherry asked him, she said, are you okay, bud? I, I mean, are you scared? And he said, no, mom, I just seen you go through it and I know you can do it, so I can do it too. Yeah, so and, for me, it was a, a total blessing to be able to go through it and have him see, that, you know, me go through it and say, okay, I can do this. So I wouldn't change, I wouldn't change it for the world. When he finished treatment, the Wishing Star Foundation sent Gabe and his family to Austin, Texas to make his dream come true of attending a Formula One race. So on the flight home, I told my parents I wanted to be a race car driver and they kind of laughed at me at first. And then I told them that, no, God didn't get me for cancer to do something ordinary. He got me for cancer to do something extraordinary. Well, we kind of thought, you know, he's 13, what 13 year old kid that just spent a week with his racing heroes at a, one of the biggest races in the world, you know, it, that's totally natural, you know, for him to want to be a race car driver. So we kind of chuckled and laughed, and then he, he got a little upset with us. Said he, he said, no, seriously, he goes, God didn't cure my cancer so I could just have a normal life and go to college or take over your business, Dad. He goes, he did it so I could do something big, so I could realize that I want to do something big with my life. That's exactly what Gabe is doing, something big. He's now a Formula 4 driver working towards becoming Formula 1. I've been down in racing, it's just I gotta keep moving forward and keep pushing and not let those setbacks hold me back. Gabe is the star of a new documentary called Do Something Extraordinary. For more information about Gabe or the documentary, text the word Gabe to our number 509-448-2000 and we'll text you back with all that information. Our next competitor comes to us from Rathdrum. 
Avery is a teenager who has been dancing her entire life. Now she's competing with dancers from around the world. Creme 2 photojournalist Dave Somers takes the stage with the local ballerina. And two. And up three. My name is Avery Denny. And four. Grand plié. I dance here at Company Ballet School. Six. Seven. My mom danced when she was younger and then she started teaching tap around the time that I was born. I've grown up dancing all around the house and then so she put me in lessons when I was two and I've been dancing ever since. At finals, you get the chance to be seen by like the biggest names in the ballet world, like ballet masters, choreographers from all over the world. The goal is to be seen by somebody um, and hopefully they'll take me into their company as like a trainee or apprentice. Um, and I go from there. <laughs> and it's kind of the opportunity of a lifetime, the chance to be seen by all those people. Um, it's something that could really jumpstart my career. Once you get there, the work's already been done, so there's only so much you can do. I just try to enjoy myself as much as possible while I'm on stage. I mean, it's only, it's only like two minutes of performance, and so I just try to leave it all on the stage. There are ski competitions, and then there's this. The tricks they're doing was crazy. It was incredibly entertaining to watch. We're heading to Wallace, Idaho, where the town is taking an extreme sport to a whole new level. And it doesn't get much more competitive than the restaurant business. Now, a Coeur d'Alene favorite has been named one of the best in the entire country. Welcome back to our Inland North Best Special, celebrating the spirit of competition. So for our next story, we're heading to Wallace, Idaho, where the town has figured out a way to make an extreme sport even more extreme. Yeah, so it's a sport called ski during and a, where a horse and a rider pull a skier at a fast pace through a course. But in Wallace, they've swapped the horses for something with a little more horsepower. Summertime level chaos, like thousands of people. And it's just so unique, you know? Nowhere else does anything like this. So. <laughs> I'm Siobhan Curette, and I'm with the Extreme Ski Drawer Board. I think someone just had the idea to take ski drawing, which is typically with horses pulling riders, and make it extreme and get ATVs involved. Ideally, it'll snow be right before the event, and we will just be able to keep some of it in the street. But for the meantime, the city piles snow down at the end there. So then we have a couple front end loaders that come in and put it all out. Friday night, we have um, a keg jump, which is an Evil Knievel style jump situation where you put down kegs and people jump them. And whoever can jump the greatest number of kegs successfully wins $500. Rain, snow, shine, whatever, the event will go on. Last year we had a whole new caliber of riders. Like the people that showed up, the, the tricks they're doing was crazy. It was incredibly entertaining to watch. And this year we have $4,000 of cash prizes. So we're hoping to attract even higher level competitors and get to see what they bring. Cause yeah, it's been really, really cool to see it from just being us locals competing. Cause we had to fill out the roster okay. to legitimate people coming from all over the country to do really cool stuff. Okay, so that is definitely extreme. But for our next story, we have something the whole family can compete in. If you've taken a ride on the Louvre Carousel, you know how fierce the ring toss game can be. Our Nathan Hyun shows us how the popular attraction recently got a big upgrade. This sound has been playing around Riverfront Park for 114 years. But listen closely. There's more than just a carousel. People have been throwing rings from the Louvre Carousel. Almost there. For over 100 years. Ah, oh, dang it! Kids like Zanana Dahlstrom are now enjoying a new take on an old tradition. I got to grab a ring from a shooter thingy over there and then toss it at the garbage you go. If you make it... Now only when you score, there's the lights go off. That's Austin Frostad. He's a mastermind behind the new tradition. Came to the carousel with my cousins last summer. 
and uh, noticed the ring target was a little different than when I grew up. Traditionally, riders threw a metal ring to ding a bell, but Austin noticed recently there was no feedback when he scored. That was when he decided to make a few changes. What we have is a, a vibration sensor that detects when the ring score, and then we animate the LED lights. This time for sure! It may sound the same, but this new look brings a new tradition for this generation of riders. I'm gonna try to get this through the garbage goat. Hey, I got it! In Spokane, Nathan Hun, Krim 2 News. A Spokane chef is in the running for one of the most prestigious awards in the restaurant business. Hear what he has to say about competition between restaurants here in the Inland Northwest. Plus, some local athletes prepare to make their mark on the World Roller Derby stage. Welcome back to our Creme 2 Inland North Best Special as we celebrate local people who are making their mark while facing all different kinds of competition. I'm Tim Pham. And I'm Channing Curtis. For our next few stories, we want to focus on one of the most cutthroat competitions out there, the world of restaurants. So let's get started with Spokane chef Tony Brown. He's the talent behind Bruins and Hunt, and he's also in the running for the prestigious James Beard Award for Best Chef in the Northwest. Definitely nice to have recognition that you're doing something right. My name is Tony Brown. I'm the owner of Ruins, Hunt, uh, formerly the owner of Stella's and Ivan. Uh, it's been a hard year, hard three years for restaurants, so to get this sort of recognition is, I think, good for the city, uh, obviously good for my restaurant. It's coming back. Um, you know, I feel like right before the pandemic, 2019 was, was my best year uh, in restaurants. Um, and I think there was a lot kind of percolating, kind of coming up, you know, during that time. And then COVID obviously kind of squashed a lot of people's plans, I think, but it's coming back now. Uh, we, we lost a lot of la the labor force, but it's, you know, we're getting there. We're a medium sized city. I mean, we're not huge, but we're not small. Uh, but we have a pretty close-knit community of chefs and cooks. And I think we, we made a list and we have, you know, a hundred former employees over 11 years. And it's fun to see like where they're all scattered around, you know, like different restaurants. It's kind of uncommon, I think, in, in a lot of cities. Like I could go down the street and ask my, my neighbor chef for a cup of sugar, you know, like, the, the, like what you do with neighbors. I love what I do. I love cooking. I love creating things. And we change our menu every month, sometimes every day, sometimes, you know, every week. So yeah, I hope that this kind of makes people more aware of my restaurant, if not, you know, more aware of just the Spokane restaurant scene, uh, that there's, there's stuff happening on the other side of the mountain. You know, a lot of times, you know, the bigger cities, the Seattle's and Portland's, they get a little bit more of the, the nod for these sorts of things, but um, there's stuff happening over here. We are blessed here in the Inland Northwest to have not just Tony, but many talented chefs. I had the opportunity to visit a few of our local spots during Inlanders Restaurant Week. Casa is all about celebrating our local community through fun fusion food and a really awesome atmosphere. The flavor profile of a dish really makes or breaks it. And so what we've done here at Casa is we're focusing on really bringing together great flavor profiles and putting them in a way that are familiar to people, but might not be expected or something that they've had before. So it's really fun, something for everyone, and I hope you guys come out and try it. And this is the adobo pork sandwich with the pan sauce. And you dip it and then eat up. Wow. <laughs> the flavors. Olive puree, caper raisin chutney. I call it uh, contemporary Italian. That which to me means that we uh, root all of our flavors in, in Italian somehow, some way. So our menu is consistently changing and um, there's very few dishes that stick around for very long. It's amazing. Wow. I, mean, I could eat this all by myself. So yeah, same. <laughs> so we pitch ourselves as fine dining, which sometimes alludes to the fact that you need to be dressed up, which you, cer you certainly don't. We like to pair things that are fine and excellent with things that are very casual and normal. Being recognized as the, one of the restaurants that's like opening and trying to do different things here. I say we're like Latin inspired, but we are not traditional. And in this case, this ceviche is more of a tostada. It's albacore tuna, chilies, mojo verde, um, and some oranges. 
And if you need another reason to visit Kismet, check it out. They were named Best New Restaurant last year. To make Hilliard stand out amongst the rest, that's what makes me like, you know, the most happy. Tim, I definitely feel like you lucked out with that assignment. I'm not complaining. It wasn't a tough day at work, <laughs> that's for sure. And you know, it's not just Spokane that's serving up great food. That's right. Izzy's Comfort Kitchen in Coeur d'Alene was actually recently named one of the top 100 best places to eat by Yelp. So our photojournalist Dave Sommer shows us what makes Izzy so special. All righty, I have your fried green tomatoes. My pleasure. Enjoy. Coming in at number 43. I believe we are that great. I know we are that great, but to see it in black and white all over the news is uh, such a humbling gift that we don't take lightly. I'm Rhiannon Keen, a chef and co-owner with uh, Jason Keen here at Izzy's. We found out we were nominated and going to be on the list maybe two weeks before Christmas. I didn't really think it was real <laughs> at first. A few hours later, I was like, I think it's a thing. So these are our fried green tomatoes. About 95% of my menu is gluten-free. Being celiac, it's something that I just had to learn how to cook that way so that I could eat. And so the idea that serving that part of the community has really become a niche of ours for those that need it and those that don't don't know it's gluten free. Sometimes they ask, well, how's the gluten free version? Like that is the gluten free yeah. version, which makes me really proud as a chef to be able to say, I want to make you something that's delicious, no matter the science of how I have to maneuver it to get it to be what I want it to be. The day that that happened, you know, we're fixing our heater had gone down and it's like, it's just the restaurant business. You win an award one moment and you're on your hands and knees scrubbing something the next. Our Inland North Best special is on a roll as we head to a tradition like no other around the Inland Northwest. A gentleman in Rathdrum mentioned to me about outhouse races. I said, what? You can watch more of our Inland North Best stories anytime on Crim 2 Plus. We post new stories every week. To watch them on demand, just navigate to the Inland North Best playlist. And if you don't have Crim 2 Plus, you can download it right now for free on Roku and Amazon Fire. For more information, just text Crim 2 to 509-448-2000 and we'll text you back more information. Welcome back to our Inland North Best special celebrating the spirit of competition. We now want to introduce you to two teens who are part of the Inland Northwest Pixies, a local junior roller derby team. The two teammates will be competing this summer in the Junior Roller Derby World Cup in France. Photojournalist Dave Somers caught up with the teens ahead of the big trip. Watch that out! Watch that out! It's a little bit of racing. I mean, middle, middle, inside, inside! It's a little bit of hitting. Roller derby is a full contact sport. I mean, no, metal, inside, inside. It's the adrenaline. I like the adrenaline of it a lot. I just love hitting people. Like, in the most nicest way, I just like, the, the adrenaline for me comes from hitting people. <laughs> Hi, I'm Thunder Breeze, and I play for the Inland Northwest Pixies. I'm pretty angry all the time, so I like getting my aggression out. It's super fun being aggressive and, you know, getting to hit people in somewhere that it's appropriate to. <laughs> Hi, uh, my derby name is Lucky Harms. I'm the coach of the Pixies. I used to be a member, and then when I aged out at 18, I joined my sister Ginger Slap as coach. <laughs> Especially like dealing with school and stuff, it's a good stress relief. And uh, you know, you can be as aggressive as you want in a safe area, so it's pretty cool to do that. <laughs> I'm Little Miss Savage. I'm on Team USA uh, for the JRDA, which is the Junior Roller Derby Association. We are going to France to play for the World Cup. When I found out, I told my mom automatically and just told my friends. Derby is not an easy sport to explain. Basically, you have four players from each team. Those are the hitters, and then two skaters from each team. Those are the racers. The jammers or the racers try to get past the people who are trying to hit them. And how you score points is you get a point from each blocker and uh, whoever gets the most points wins. I initially said I didn't want them to go because I wanted to hoard them, but I'm, I'm glad they're spreading their wings. You know, this is a pretty cool opportunity. You know, one that I never really had a chance to do, so it's pretty cool that they, they get to go and do this. 
Over the last half hour, we've showed you that competition can take many forms, but this next one just might be the most unique. It's a race in Spirit Lake where the winner quite literally takes the throne. Don't linger too long in the outhouse. Hi, I'm Mitzi Mashad, the Park and Recreation Director for Spirit Lake Parks and Rec. We do a winter festival, and so I kind of look through to see, because I just started about two years ago, I looked through to see what types of activities they did, and they did comment that the attendance has been dropping. A gentleman in Raftrum mentioned to me about outhouse races. I said, what? So I Googled it. It's a huge thing in some of these states. I don't know that there is any other outhouse race here in Idaho. So that's why I thought, you know what? We have the big back in lawnmower races. We need to have outhouse races in the winter. Hi, I'm Colin from Saddle Myers Resort and Restaurant. Last year, we built this outhouse for the uh, outhouse races here. Well, we've got the all important toilet paper and you've got to have a toilet seat. And then uh, they build in handles on either side here, so if it's a rough ride, you got something to hold on to, you don't fly out. I have a, a blueprint that I've been providing for people on our website. You have to have your push bar, and then you have your skis on the bottom. It's just a straight street that we ra race on. A lot of people, they weren't sure what it was, but it was one of those things that I asked Colin here with Settlemeyers. I said, would you mind if we use your outhouse since you already won and you're the only one that built one? So Colin was more than welcome to let them use that. So as people started seeing what they were doing, then we ended up with 21 teams by the end of the day. It's a great thing. I would love to see like restaurants challenge each other from Main Street or uh, like here we have Spirit Lake Fire Department challenging the Coeur d'Alene Fire Department. So it's just a matter of getting people up to do it and letting them know, you know, how, how much fun it is. So we want to congratulate North Idaho Tire who flushed away the competition and took first place. So with that, thank you for watching this Creme 2 News Inland Northwest special as we celebrate the competitive side of the Inland Northwest. I'm Tim Pham. And I'm Channing Curtis. Thanks for watching.